Do you ever get tired of people deciding like who you are and what you stand for? Like they don't really ask, they just tell you and then when you try to say no, 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 this is actually what I think and then they tell you no, 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 we've already decided. Do you ever get tired of that? I mean, really. It's definitely frustrating, to say the least. I mean, I feel like I grew up in such an environment where everybody was telling me, you know, what to be, who to be, what to stand for. So now that I've kind of come into my own and I have a more confident state of self-awareness it can be challenging but it's really not as challenging as how big a temper tantrums people throw when you decide not to be their doormat do you know what i mean i mean yeah i do i feel like people throw temper tantrums to validate their own voice even when their voice doesn't make sense they definitely think that if they scream really loud and like beat their fists on the ground that you just automatically are gonna be like okay okay I don't want to deal with this so you're right but I don't know I feel like I've come way too far to go backwards you know what I mean I definitely think we don't need to go backwards for sure but I mean you had to have known that having a voice and telling people you have a voice and using that voice was gonna create some issues regardless no, no, I did. I just sometimes forget that expecting people to be decent and expecting them to do the right thing or just simply act like adults is really asking way too much. You're right. It really is. Hey! Welcome back to another episode of Monday Coffee with the Doll. I am your hostess with the mostest, the HPIC, head pin up in charge here at the show, Miss Emily Doll. It's been a while since I did a show, like, three weeks and I apologize. I've been balancing out some new things in my life that really just took a lot of my attention. But here we are, back with a new episode. And this episode is gonna have so much tea. So much tea. So make sure that you get your mug of positivity if you have one. Get a nice steaming cup of hot joe and let's get right into this. So it's been a while and I haven't been Keeping up with this, I apologize. There's really nobody to blame but myself. I've just been a little distracted with other things. I've been trying to balance things out. Um, and every single time I feel like I'm gonna get ahead, something else crazy happens and just like pushes me backwards. That's that's life though. And sometimes I struggle with just the basic lifing things. I think that we all do. And then we are really hard on ourselves. <laughs> But um, this week's topic, I've decided, is going to be, I struggled between like two different categories, like talking about not being a doormat, and also um, dealing with the two personalities and conflicting mentalities in the girl power movement, um, both the boss bitch mentality, and then the that bitch mentality, which is usually where all the mean girls like to sit. So I think I'm just gonna mash them all together and this is gonna be a don't be a doormat for those bitches because you're a boss bitch and you can do your own thing. So I've recently found myself in the middle of something that I worked really hard to not be in the middle of, but sometimes people like to make choices for you no matter how many times you're like, no thank you. I don't want to. They um, try to twist your arm into doing what they want. So because they were twisting so hard and my shoulders already messed up, I was like, you know what? I'll just, um, I'll just take my own stance on it. So I decided to start um, not really having an opinion on the matter, but just making sure that my basic point of view was put out there. I don't really want to waste my time on feeding the the situation that they want to get attention from, but sometimes you get put in situations that you have to address no matter what, right? And I've been put into a situation like that where an entire group of those bitches has decided to make me a target because, I mean, why wouldn't you want to take on a real boss bitch? That would be quite the challenge if you could defeat her, right? Right. 
unfortunately, they picked the wrong one. I'm not gonna go into great detail or even really even talk about the point or what started this because I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I didn't I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. I defended myself. And you know, there's a lot of people out there that aren't going to like when you defend yourself. There's some people I think that automatically assume they know people and that they're just going to be able to control them. Um, because for the most part, if you're like me and you take kind of a neutral stance and in some areas, because it's not really where your focus is, they think that that means that they can just automatically manipulate your point of view or manipulate your stance on it. And for somebody like me, I'm non-confrontational. <laughs> I don't like confrontation. I don't like arguing. I don't like fighting, which is why there's a lot of topics that I don't talk about on my channel, on my feed. I feel like there's a lot of dedicated um, platforms for specific to topics and people are so flooded with people talking about those topics. I decide to talk about the things that are personal to me because it's something that I know that I can speak on. Um, and have kind of a, a story or you know I have a truth in the topics that I speak on and the things that I share and then there's things that I really don't get into and a lot of the stuff that I don't get into is because I don't like the mindset that follows it anymore you know what I mean you know I feel like the internet is so flooded with people who just want to yell and scream at each other and throw temper tantrums and they feel like they're allowed there's like these this group that feels like they're allowed to behave in certain ways and talk to people certain ways and demand certain things and then when other people are like no you don't you don't get to do that that's not that's not how this works you don't get to demand things from me you don't get that entitled standing they start self-victimizing themselves and then all of a sudden try to paint you as the bad guy like you started something when all you were doing was defending yourself and I think it's a tactic to try and scare people into backing off like if they can't immediately get their way <laughs> they just start going oh my god you're a bully you're this you're that you were mean to me you yelled at me you did this you did that and it's like well I tried to come at you on a mature level I tried to have an adult conversation with you. I tried to explain why I didn't feel a certain way or why I felt like you were portraying me in a way that I 100% know that I'm not. And since that wasn't good enough, being a grown-up wasn't good enough, I had to bring myself down to a level that I thought maybe you would understand. And that was the level that you were addressing me on. And now I'm a bad guy. Great. I think that in the girl world it can be really difficult because you know your women are not frail dainty little things that you can't you know be aggressive with we are strong powerful confident brave beings right and we have worth and when I feel like my worth is being threatened I'm going to defend my worth a hundred percent I came out of a really abusive relationship and now I'm dealing with a really abusive family situation and one of the things that keeps I feel being disrespected is my personal worth like it feel like my worth isn't respected enough to have a voice and, and speak what I want and speak how I feel and speak what I stand for. It's just immediately disregarded and somebody wants to tell me, no, you're this or you're that or this is how you feel or this is... And it's like, I'm literally trying to tell you, but you don't want to listen because you've already made up your mind. You have an agenda and you need me to fit that agenda that you've created. But I'm not going to just sit down and shut up and fall into this mold that you've decided that you want to put me into. Bitch, I break molds. I don't fit in them. And I really think that's kind of where the, the two different mindsets of the girl power movement kind of are. And I see it a lot. I don't get involved 
in a lot of drama or a lot of arguments um, but people like to try and put me in the middle of it and then when I choose to take the high road of facts I like to speak factual like no this is exactly what I mean this is what I did and this is what I said you can twist it and manipulate it however you want and you can perceive it however you need to to validate your self victimization but every time you come at me I'm gonna bring you right back to the facts of the situation and you're not allowed to do that apparently you're not allowed to put those personalities in their place right we're just supposed to sit here and accept all women and accept all personalities and accept all this and accept all that well she's a woman and you need to support her girl power this and girl that and girl this and it's like no <laughs> no no I'm sorry that's not that literally goes against everything that we're working for you know what I mean and as a boss bitch, boss bitches are women who 100% not only work towards being all of the amazing and positive things they strive to be, but they also take the time to encourage and build up and help other women do so too. And that's the group I like to, I like to be in. And if somebody challenges that and somebody tries to come at me or come at one of my friends on a level that is not in that area, I'm not going to stand for it. Why? Because standing for something like that is wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. And if by me calling you out for that behavior means I'm a bully, I mean, then you can call me that. Like, call me whatever you want. I know what my behavior is. I know what I say. I know what I do. And at the end of the day, I'm confident in that. And people who know me are confident in that. Girls all over the world come to me. Like right now, my inbox is so full of women reaching out to me who are either currently going through the same thing that I'm going through with a very extremist bullying group or they already went through it, right? So I have all of these messages from women because they know what they're gonna get from me. You know, they know that they're going to get love and acceptance and realness. And that's because that's what I put out. So if somebody wants to challenge that and somebody wants to try and slander that, they're more than welcome to try. But I choose to continue down the same road that I've always gone down because it's the high road and I can't swim very well. So cheers to that. There's this group of women who and I'm not talking about anybody specific. I'm talking about women in general. There's there's a group of a lot of women in this world who I like to call the that bitch mentality. And the that bitch mentality is toxic to the girl power movement. It is absolutely toxic. And these women like to stand behind the girl power movement and use it as a shield so they can further bully, harass, and abuse women that challenge them, right? That's what it is. And you have one of two choices. You can either, well, three choices. I'm number three. You can either take the easy road and cave to them and allow them to put you on a leash and you can dote on them and agree with everything they say, which will remove you from being in, a, in their line of target right so they'll leave you alone you can continue to try and fight against it and they'll continue to torment you and then you give up and you give in i've heard from a lot of women lately who are speaking out on the same group that's trying to harass me saying i don't do the things that i love anymore because they came at me with this and i couldn't take it and i quit and that's ultimately their goal is that they want to crush any other woman that may surpass them in something which is absolutely stupid and then there's group three which is me and i am in the group that doesn't give any actual a lot of people you know they don't like it when you speak out because you speak out on i think ultimately the things that they know they're wrong in but they don't want to be held accountable in 
There's a lot of people that are gonna scream and have this voice and they think that the louder the scream that they'll be able to silence people and you can't just scream at people and demand that they bend to whatever opinion it is you stand on, right? You're allowed to have your opinion and other people are allowed to have their opinion. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a very specific form of toxic behavior that's running rampant in the girl community, the woman community. You know what I mean? And if you're a female, you've seen it. You know, a lot of people want to yell at you when you're like, I stand up to bullies and they're like, no, you just need to love and accept. Yeah, I love and accept everybody, 100%. But if you purposefully go out of your way to consistently harm, harass, bully, defame, and try to smear other girls' names, then clearly you don't want to be loved at all. And, you know, I'm the first person to say I'll forgive anybody. A hundred percent. I had a bully come at me, um, well, next bully come to me uh, last year, end of last year. And I was really surprised to have her come into my messenger. And I knew exactly who she was. And she was a, within a group of women who decided to target me for I don't know what reason. I guess because a photographer started to go fund me for me to try and help me get a car because I just left my abusive marriage. I didn't have a car. I didn't have anything. And she was trying to help me, you know, get to shoots and do things like that. I had no idea she was going to do that. I immediately had her take it down because I was extremely uncomfortable with it. I did not want any part of that. Um, but for some reason this made, it like triggered these women for some reason. And I don't really think it was necessarily that. Now that I look back on it, I think that it was the fact that I was shooting way more. Like I wasn't shooting at all because my ex didn't support any of that. So I wasn't shooting at all. And then all of a sudden, I'm doing all these photo shoots. I have all these photos. All these magazines want me. All these pages are sharing me. And that's probably ultimately what upset them. Um, but what they used was the fact that somebody created a GoFundMe for me. And it made them mad. How dare she? She, who would do that? I'd never agree to that. I, I would be so ashamed. I work for everything that I have. Blah, 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 blah. Which is just stupid. Just if you think about it, you're mad that somebody liked me so much and wanted to help me so much that they went out of their way to do something nice for me and you're offended by that? What the hell is going on? But... It's, it offended them so much that it's literally been brought up this week. Like, that was one of the triggers that was talked shit about me, was that specific instance. And it's like, you still big mad about that? If you're that mad, I'll make you a GoFundMe. I'll tell people to donate to you to get some more sugar in your diet, because clearly you have way too much sodium, because you're salty. But one of, the, one of the girls in that group reached out to me, and she said, Hey, I just wanted to apologize for my involvement and any bullying or anything I said to you that hurt you or anything that I did, any of my behavior, I'm sorry. I understand now, I understand the toxicity of it, I understand why it's wrong, I understand all of it and I didn't see it and I got caught up in that mindset of being these, you know, bad bitches who didn't care about anything and were just attacking anybody and she was like, I get it now, and I'm ashamed, and I'm sorry. And you know what I did? I was happy. I was so, so happy. I've never had a bully. I've had a few people on my page reach out to me after they've talked shit in my comments, and they're like, you know what, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. But I've never had, like, an actual person who specifically targeted me with another group of girls say, hey, I was wrong. And the thing that made me the happiest about that it wasn't because I felt like I somehow had closure or justice. I felt like this woman now had the opportunity to really experience friends and life and just everything. You know what I mean? Like when you get into these click girl groups that are, you know, they usually have these head chicks that are poking and prodding everybody and that kind of control it and fuel it. But then there's all of their minions that work underneath them 
and those are the ones that they use to validate their behavior okay these women underneath them aren't really important to them they don't really care about them but they need an army of women who will kneel to their their being the leaders and them being the cool ones but that will fill everything that they do with oh my gosh you're so right I can't believe this I can't believe this girl is doing this you're so right she should be ashamed of herself I'm not going to be friends with her anymore because you said that she's not a good person and it's like <laughs> do you not have your own mind like did we get invaded by <laughs> that bitch mentality and it like takes over your brain can you not think for yourself in no way has anybody ever said something I've had a lot of girls come to me and they say oh, I don't like this girl okay she just uh, I feel bad she made me feel bad and she did this this and this so I don't like her and I've never once been like oh my god I hate her too. No. I've always been like, oh yeah, that sucks. That's not cool. That behavior is wrong. She shouldn't have done that to you. And I speak on the behavior that's being shared with me, right? But then, like, if at any point that woman comes to me or I have to be around that woman, I learn about her. Like, I want to know about you. Please share with me who you are. And then I'll make a judgment on whether or not you're somebody I want in my life or not in my life. And if I decide you're somebody I don't want in my life, then you're just not. That doesn't mean it gives me the right to go around smearing you or <laughs> talking shit about you or telling everybody else that they don't need to know you or be a part of you. It just means that I personally, I don't favor your behavior. So I don't want your behavior around me. And as far as I'm concerned, you're on a different planet. I'm not going to talk about you. I'm not going to think about you. But if you come at me, I'll talk to you about it. Like, that's the first thing that I did in the situation I was in. I didn't jump on Facebook and, <laughs> and start getting crazy in comments. I messaged her because that's what grown-ups do. Um, but she made it very clear that that wasn't going to matter because she just kept on in the comment feeds and kept threatening me. And what are you going to do? You're not going to do anything. You are going to simply state your case and then you are going to move on. Because that's what boss bitches do. We do not leave, lose sleep over any girl who wants to act like the bitch. Can I get an amen? Here, here. I think that in closing, what I'm gonna say is that, you know, as the girl power movement, you know, we still have to do the right thing, right? We still have to make choices that are hard and it's, it's really hard to make right choices when women like that are coming at you and you do feel attacked and you do feel, you know, judged and hated and this and that and you can't, you start questioning yourself, right? Well, that's what they want you to do. They have to, they have to start breaking you down and then if they break you down, then you can't challenge them anymore and ultimately that's their fear is that they don't want to be challenged, they're insecure, there's something unstable going on and there's nothing you can do to fix that, there's really not. If any of these women wanted to come to me and be like, hey, this is my problem, I would talk to them, but they don't do that because that's, they don't, they don't want to fix it. It's like I've been telling my friend Candace. My friend Candace is probably the sweetest, most genuine and kind person. Like literally, I she might be an angel. I'm not, I'm not, don't quote me on this, but I don't think I've ever met anybody who is just so saturated with genuine goodness. This woman does not want to hurt or harm anybody. She will go out of her way. She'll even cater to people who are being mean to her, you guys. That's how sweet and wonderful and kind she is. And I told her, because she's struggling with some mean girls right now, that basically are claiming that she doesn't have a right to the thing that she created and that she loves, her passion and what she is working so hard to create. And they're basically shaming her. 
they want her to give up and she told me she's like i don't know what to do i've said sorry i've which first of all i was like girl that's where you went wrong you do not need to say sorry you don't apologize for things that you didn't do wrong just because somebody else wants to be mad at you unless you actually did something to somebody you were mean to them or you really did do something like you need to self-reflect for real self-reflect first and if you didn't do anything wrong all you can do is apologize for them being offended that's all you can do i'm sorry that my me living my life has upset you i apologize but i'm not going to cater to everything that offends you if me embracing myself and me doing what makes me happy is hurtful to you, then please remove yourself from my life. Like, that's all you can do. That's it. Like, if they want to continue to stalk you and constantly follow everything you do online so they can always be mad, like, that's on them. Do not apologize for being you. And I told her that they don't want you to be sorry. They don't want a solution they don't want to fix it they want to break you and until they feel like they've dominated and broke you they're going to continue to harass you and berate you and attack you and gang up on you because that's what that mentality of girl gang does and it's not the good girl gang it's not the girl gang you want to be a part of you know what i'm saying like in my group of friends, and I don't have a big group, I have a pretty small group, but in my group of friends, never once have I succeeded at something and lost one of them. Not once. Every time I do something that pushes me or excels me forward in, in what I'm doing with my life, they're always there cheering me on. <laughs> keep going, keep pushing. You got this girl, you got this girl. Never once is it, oh my God, she doesn't, <sighs> She doesn't deserve that. Why does she have that? Like, who does she think she is? Like, it's never a negative. And when I start getting that type of feedback from women, I know that they are not in my corner. I know that they are not part of my squad. And we need to start becoming braver in removing the that bitch mentality out of our squads and not feeling sorry for it. You know what I'm saying? For a really long time, I had this mindset where I was too afraid to challenge anybody. Anybody. Whether it be in my career, in pinup, in my family, my ex, I never wanted to challenge anybody because I was fearful. And if you look, people like that work off of fear. And they push you and push you and push you and they expect you to be too scared to fight back. And you know, when people come at me and try to tell me that I'm wrong for standing up for myself, well, okay, you're just going to have to think that I'm wrong. We have to start being brave in ourselves. We are not doormats, okay? We are not doormats. We are strong, brave, confident, powerful women who are just trying to succeed in our hopes and dreams, and we want to support other women in doing so. And when the bad eggs pop in... We need to just let them pop right out. You know what I'm saying? Stop humoring it. Stop. Like, you don't have to humor it. I am so heartbroken for all of the girls in my messenger right now who are telling me they gave up pinup because what these women did to them, like the harassment, the lies, the smearing. Emily, I gave up. I don't even do pinup anymore. What? Like... What do you mean? What do you mean you don't do pinup anymore? What do you mean you gave up something important for these women who clearly don't love you or care anything about you? Why would you give something up for somebody who doesn't care anything about you and just wants you to fail? Why? That confuses me. I don't waste my time with people who purposefully are trying to hurt me. And I'm not afraid to stand up for myself anymore. I used to get real, my, like, my anxiety over, I guess, confrontation with people who wanted to try and test me and try to challenge 
what I was doing um, and not in positive ways like purposefully setting out to try and hurt me because that's just what they do you know I used to even try to appease those people because I was so scared to upset somebody and I've gotten to the point where I'm not gonna sacrifice my happiness or who I am to try and validate people's bullying behavior you know what I mean and I'll give anybody an opportunity and anybody a chance like but I'm not at the expense, not at the expense of my happiness. I won't. Like, if you want to come to me and be like, hey, I'm sorry I acted like an asshole. I'm done. Okay. We're good. Squashed. Boom. Clean slate. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to talk about it. But if you do that and then go comment and stir shit up and lie about me in private groups where you think you're safe bye for real like now you really are not a part of my life like before we were acquaintances <laughs> now we ain't even that okay so now we're gonna talk about our sponsors our, our monday coffee kisser of the week and i'm gonna open some doll fan mail because i've talked long enough um have you guys checked out forever above me forever above me is the brand that makes my amazing mug of positivities if you want to support monday coffee with the doll get yourself a mug of positivity you can find it in the link below and also be sure to become a part of the forever above me fam they're an amazing brand that supports and shares what inspire us in our lives um but they're a really great group of people who are just super positive um and they share a lot of really awesome models. I know they share a lot of the um, Lucky Devil pinup models. So check them out. You can find all their info below. This week's Monday Coffee Kisser is brought to you by Koki Cosmetics. Koki Doki? No, it's not Koki Doki. It's just Koki. So Koki Cosmetics is a cruelty-free brand. I don't know if they're vegan. They might be. I know you can buy them online. Some Walmarts carry them. I am wearing their lip powder. Yes, I am. It's a really um, awesome matte liquid lipstick. This is the shade Garnet, which is also my birthstone. January babies, what? Um, it doesn't dry all the way down, as you can see. It doesn't dry all the way down. It's pretty matte, but hold on. See what I mean? So it dries down to a kind of um, long-lasting finish, but definitely not a 100% transfer-proof finish. So if you have a problem with that, this one's not going to be for you. It's comfortable and it is long-lasting, but things like eating and drinking a lot throughout the day, which is me, I'm always putting something in my face hole, um, that's what she said, it's, it could be um, not for you. Some really amazing people to check out. Um, that we're gonna give shout outs to are going to be my, my phone is just a crazy mess right now with everybody that's like Emily oh my god did you know what happened and I'm like yeah I don't care I got better things to do so uh, make sure that you check out NC for the treats bath and body NC Fizzy Treats is an all-natural um, CBD packed bath and body brand. Um, Nikki is a huge supporter of mine. She is always posting her mug of positivity, starting out her week positive because we are positive pinups. Yes, we are. But she's a really amazing lady who can custom make a lot of bath and body products that are full of CBD goodness. Once you use her bath bombs you're probably never gonna use anything um I'm, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this but she is better than um lush so hate me hate me if you want and also another amazing and positive woman to follow is miss modern vintage miss modern vintage miss is an amazing instagrammer Miss B, I absolutely love her. She was always posting a lot of really positive things on her blog, but she's also just a lot of fun, and um, I appreciate her love and support because she's just fantastic. So I have some doll fan mail. If you guys want to send 
some doll fan mail. You guys can find my P.O. box below. Every time anybody sends me anything, you will get some goodies back. Things like signed photos. Oh, yeah. And I just had some stickers made. Oh, yeah. So you'll get some stickers. So this first one is from a beautiful lady named Sarah Moore. Hello, Sarah. She is from New Zealand. What? Holla. I like to watch um, the New Zealand Border Patrol that's on Netflix. Super rad. Let's see what this beauty sent me. I can't get it open. So we're going to have our doll ship. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Pocket knives are good for everything. Except we don't use them to cut bitches. We use our eyeliner for that. Yes. I smell something good, y'all. <laughs> I ain't even playing. What is this? Oh my god, you guys, it's candy. What do we got? Whitakers? Whitakers is a shit. West Coast buttermilk caramelized white chocolate with gingerbread biscuit. I have not seen that in America. White Coast, West Coast buttermilk caramelized white chocolate. Girl, I have never seen those here. This must be some extra special New Zealand candy. Oh, and look, to Ben and Charlie. Oh my gosh. Girl. My kids are literally going to lose their minds. I thought we were going to go do stuff for spring break, but clearly I know what they're going to be doing for spring break. Oh my gosh. I can't. Ah! I love it when people think about my babies because my babies are my whole, whole world. Try putting this in the freezer first. What is this? Oh, what is raspberry flavored jelly in white and milk chocolate? You guys, okay, so real talk, Sarah. There used to be these things, they were like little tiny sticks and they were raspberry jelly, like that hard, kind of hard, but not hard, wrapped in chocolate. My favorite things in the whole world, but I can't find them anywhere anymore. And the few times that I found them at Hobby Lobby, they were always like old as hell, so they never tasted good. I'm so excited about this, it's like you know my soul. And then, a card to me and Jeff Papa. So I'm gonna save this for us. Y'all don't get to know what that is. Thank you, Miss Sarah. I will be sending you some love back, girlfriend. And oh my gosh, my kids will be sending you some love back. Super Ben. Our next, our next doll fan mail was sent from also another country. Where was this sent from? Let's see. This was sent from Mossinger. Hello. Mossinger. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's from Germany, so I could be pronouncing it wrong. If I am, know that I still love you, and you're still part of my doll fam. Let's hope I don't cut myself. So, Germany, fun fact, I am, people always ask me what ethnicity I am. Um, I'm Native American, I'm Scottish, and I'm German, not Asian. <laughs> I don't care if you see me featured as the Asian pinup of the day. I am not Asian. Although, if I if I was, I wouldn't be mad. Because they are rad. So, what do we got? We have a beautiful letter. That I'm going to keep to myself. Because. Let's see. Well, no. Let's share it. Dear Emily, here is a little present from a little fan from France. Oh, France. This says Germany. That postman doesn't know what he's doing. I didn't know what I wanted to send to you for Valentine's Day. I got lots of goodies from Valentine's Day. Some of them coming from further away took a little bit longer. So here is a sweetheart filled with chocolate and I hope you like it. Um, then there are two pictures. One is a picture of my old vintage car, oh, fuck. a 1964 Cadillac. And the other one is a really bad finish looking picture of fishing picture of me I don't take this picture on the serious side I did it for fun and I was really proud of the end result I hope everything is all right and I wish you a lot of good things happening to you in the future keep doing what you do and be happy this one of the few words I wanted to say sweet kisses on your cheeks like we do in France and happy Valentine's Day Love it. Let's see what we got, y'all. Oh, man. I know who 
this is. I recognize your handsome face. So first of all, it's Cadillac, y'all. Oh my gosh. Second, are you ready for this? All the single ladies, get ready. Y'all are gonna lose your damn minds. What is up? I know who you are. I've seen you in my feeds. This is a really great picture, actually. I like your finish. I like the black and white. I love your jacket. This is such classic, traditional greaser rockabilly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any of your ladies who are interested in this handsome face, y'all need to leave your contact info below. Yeah. Or boys. I don't know. Whatever he's into. Whatever you're into. Handsome face. Yes. And what do we got? Candy! Mm-hmm. I can smell it. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So much love. So much doll fan mail. You guys um, watch your mailboxes. I'm going to go get you guys some um, personal cards. I like to pick everybody else out like a card when I send it. And then um, I'll be sending you guys some love back. So... Thank you so much. If you guys want to send anything, um, like I said, my PO box is below. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. There's always crazy goodness going on. I've talked way too long, as always. Um, if you guys want to reach out to me, you can always do so in the comments below, or you can find some more contact information in the video description below. But until next time, this is Monday Coffee with the Doll. Remember, these are the days that fill your week. You get to decide on whether or not you're going to be the doormat or the doorman, woman. Open your own doors, walk through them unapologetically. You know what I'm saying? Know that no matter what squad doesn't accept you, my squad is always accepting participants. One where you will not have to walk in fear of being disowned if you succeed in something amazing in your life, but praised and encouraged to keep reaching your goals. So, I am Emily Dahl, and until next time, know that I love your faces. Yes, know that I do, so. Bye!